Wonderful. Good morning to all of you. It's such a joy to be with you all this morning. And what a wonderful day and what a wonderful God we serve. Amen. There's no one like our God. He loves us so much. He still loves us so much. And he loves us forever. Amen. And we can never, we can never, you know, we can never repay him for his kindness, for his goodness, for his mercy, not just upon us, but upon our planet Earth, you know, upon all the people. I mean, if, if, if God would be angry, he would just knock off and create another million zillion planets if he wants, just by a single breath. Our God is not a stargazer, he's a star breather. <laughs> he breathes out millions and billions of stars at just one breath. That's what he is. It's unfathomable, incomprehensible. Yeah. So uh, thank you, dear pastor, for giving me an opportunity to come to share the word of God. And uh, thank you for all of you joining us in person and joining us online. And I want you to know your life will never be the same again. Amen. So <clears throat> let's go quickly to the word of God. Um, I would love to start with Psalms 20. Uh, I mean, it's normally not my habit to pick up on the date uh, because I'm not that kind of a person. But it so happens that uh, the Lord impressed in my heart to speak about this. So it so happens that whatever I pick up, the passage I, w the, I want to share has certain numbers and the numbers coincides with the uh, dates Okay, so uh, it says in Psalms 20, I'm reading from the Passion Translation. Um, okay, Song of Trust for the Pure and Shining One. And it says, in your day of danger, may the Lord answer and deliver you. In, our God is a God who helps us in times of trouble. Amen. May the name of God of Jacob set you safely on high. 2002. May supernatural help be sent from his sanctuary. I love this verse. May supernatural help be sent from his sanctuary. May he support you from Zion's fortress. May he remember every gift you have given him. And celebrate every sacrifice of love. May he celebrate every sacrifice of love you have shown him. And it says, pause in his presence. Don't be in a hurry. We are not in a hurry to catch any flight. May God, you know, when he remembers your gift that you have given to him, in whichever way, in whichever form, and when he celebrates, he really celebrates every single sacrifice of love you have shown him. You've expressed your love by sacrificing so many things for him. And when he sees that, when he sees that, may God give you every desire of your heart and carry out your every plan as you go to the battle. We sang about the song about battle. The battle belongs to the Lord. The battle is not yours. For those who are watching me online, don't struggle. Don't fight your battles. Stop fighting. Cease. Cease fire. Stop. Park your car. Pull the handbrakes and say, thank you, God. Pause in his presence. Be still. And know that he is God. Be still. He fights your battle. You don't have to fight this battle. Exodus 14, 14. The Lord shall fight the battles for you. You don't have to fight this battle. Second Chronicles 20. Again 20. Why 20 today? Okay. Today must be something special for somebody. <laughs> 20. It's 10, 10 a.m. That's 20 again. Okay. Second Chronicles 20, 20. This, 
amazing media people. I love these people. So they rose early in the morning, that's us, went out to the wilderness of Tekoa. As they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, inhabitants, believe in the Lord your God. Believe, put your trust, the Lord your God. Not on money, not on, not on you know, your position, not on status, not on the, on the land, the house, government, people, job, salary. Don't put your trust on anything that is, you know, temporary, transient, you know, will pass away. Trust to the Lord. Believe in the Lord your God. That's number one. And you shall be established. And also believe his prophets. It doesn't say, and, sorry, delete that word. Believe his prophets. As you believe in the Lord, believe his prophets. You shall prosper. Amen. Previous verse, 17th verse, is one of my favorite verse. Second Chronicles 20, 17. You will not need to fight in this battle. Uh, this morning, I would love to, I don't have to tell or shake my body, speak in tongues and say, Thus saith the Lord. No, you know that is speaking from his holy throne, from his holy mountain. And God is a God who still speaks. Our God is a God who speaks and continues to speak. Many people think God stopped speaking after the book of Revelation. No, he still speaks. Not only through the Bible, he speaks to your heart. And through your heart. Uh, you know, uh, one of my favorite verse, Matthew 4.4, 4, it says, A man shall not live by bread alone. His word is the bread. By the written word, okay, the bread. Many people think bread is from the bakery, you know. Not that bread. God is not talking about that bread. How can we be so dumb? Okay, man shall not live by bread and jam alone, but... But by every word that proceeds. It doesn't say proceeded. It's not talking about the Bible that you have in your hand. Bible is required. What is Bible for? Basic instruction before leaving earth. Okay, that's a basic instruction. But further instruction you hear from God himself. <laughs> he gives you a daily word. He is a God of the dailies. He's a God of, he's not a God who puts stuff in the fridge and, you know, cooks it up. There's no microwave in heaven. God makes fresh bread and gives you every day. Not every Sunday, but every day. Don't wait for God's word to come to you on Sunday. God's word comes to you from God himself every day. Since you don't collect it every day, pastors collect it and give it to you on Sunday. But anyway, but by every word that proceeds, the word, every word in the New Testament, the Greek word is a present continuous tense. Means every word that proceeds, keeps on proceeding and still proceeds, you know, never stops, keeps on proceeding from the mouth of God. God doesn't shut his mouth. He still speaks. Words still come from his mouth mouth to every one of you who has ears to hear and eyes to see. May God open the ears, your spiritual ears, to hear the loving Abba Father speaking to you every second, every minute. The maker of Israel does not sleep nor slumber. He speaks to you 24 by 7. We can choose to hear or not here. His choice is totally up to us. So many people have collected books and accumulated books of how to hear God's voice. Seven steps to hear God's voice. Four steps to hear God's voice. There are no steps. Just hear him. Very simple. He's a God who speaks. Keep the scripture on the screen. I love that scripture. Yeah, Matthew 4, 4, right? Well, it's a proceeding word of God. I mean, I can speak volumes and volumes on that, but let's continue. Uh, no, no, let's continue with uh, uh, um, um, Psalms 20. Uh, did we complete reading? Okay. May God give you every desire of your heart, but make sure that the desire is planted by God himself. Not your own whims and fancies. But many people say, oh, I have a desire to have a BMW. But did God put the desire in your heart? 
He doesn't want to put that car in your hand because your feet are your feet is they they're very itchy. They just want to accelerate. And what if you go bang your car? Start with a Cadillac. Okay, no, just joking. <laughs> Learn to drive properly, control your speed, and then God gives you not according to your greed, but according to your need. Amen. So may God give you every desire of your heart and carry out your plan as you go to battle. Carry out. Carry out your every plan as you go to the battle. When you succeed, we will celebrate and shout for joy. That's what dear sister was singing. Shout for joy. Hallelujah. And flags will fly when victory is yours. Amen. Yes, God will answer your prayers. We will praise him. We will praise his name forevermore. God will answer your prayers. He doesn't say, wait, uh, maybe, no, yes, no. He will answer your prayer, provided the prayer is something that God put in your heart for you to pray. Every prayer that he puts in your heart and you pray, he will answer. If you pray the prayer from your own heart, your own mind, sorry. <laughs> and I know God gives me all that I ask for and brings victory to his anointed king. My deliverance cry will be heard in his holy heaven. My deliverance cry. Shout of deliverance will be heard in his holy heaven. By his mighty hand, miracles will manifest through his saving strength. God wants to bring deliverance. God wants to do mighty miracles. He desires. He longs. Wow. At one breath, <laughs> he created millions and millions and millions and millions. I can't. We have no time. Millions, infinity times of stars are just one breath. You mean to say he stopped breathing? No way. He's a God of miracles. Amen. And some find, oh wow, I never knew this scripture was here. Some find their strength in their weapons and wisdom. I like this translation. Brian Simmons did a good job. By my miracle, but my miracle deliverance can never be won by weapons of warfare. I think Old King James Version says, some trust in chariots. I like that. I love that. Some trust in chariots. Some in horses. Some in banks. Okay. But we will trust. We will remember. We will remember and praise the name of our Lord, our God. Wow. But my, our boast, we rave about. We go wild. We go crazy in the name of our Lord, our God, who makes us strong and gives us victory. What a lovely psalm. Builds my spirit better than coffee. Okay, our, <laughs> our enemies will not prevail. They will only collapse and perish in defeat. Our enemies, I want to declare and decree from Dover, New Hampshire, our enemies will not prevail. Hallelujah. They will bow down and they will fall, but we have risen and stand upright. Hallelujah. Our enemies will never prevail. Our enemies, thousand, it may fall on the left, ten thousand on our right, but no evil can come near our dwelling place. Our enemies will Will not prevail. Every enemy of our God is our enemy too. And every victory of our God is our victory too. Our enemies will not prevail. They will only collapse and perish in defeat while we rise up. Out of the ashes we rise. Out of defeats we rise. Failure is not final. Failure is not fatal. Failure is just a pedestal for our success. Amen. Quote by Dr. Joshua Paul. Okay, you have a right to copy. Okay, our enemies will not prevail. Okay, we will perish in defeat while we will rise up full of courage. Rise up this morning full of courage, full of valiant, valiant courage. Give victory to our King, our God. The day we call on you, give us your answer. So prayer is something that is present. He's a God who answered prayer. God who answers prayer. God will continue to answer our prayer. May the King answer us when we call. We have no other King but Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen? Okay, let's move on from here. I know I have a time clicking over there. We've got nine more minutes to go. And Proverbs 20th chapter. Oh, no, this is very dangerous. Maybe I should use this for the next service. Okay. 
What if you don't have your breakfast and come back? I will miss, you will miss the prophetic word that God has for you, okay? It's not going to happen again. Ooh, king, we finished Psalm 20 with king. May the king answer us when we call. And verse 2, Proverbs 20, 0, 2, 2, 0, 0, 2. Pastor must be very happy today. Whoa, all the answer comes in one day. Goodness gracious, the rage of a king is like a roar of a lion. God wants us to, the wrath of a king. Oh, a wrath of a king. I like the roar of the king. Rage of a king is like a roaring of a lion. God is raising a company of lions in New Hampshire. The Lord is raising a company of eagles in New Hampshire. It doesn't say God is raising a company of rabbits. We will have too many people here. Rabbits breed faster. But lions and eagles, they take their own sweet time. Amen? And more powerful we are, more stronger we are. Elephants don't breed like rabbits. Okay. So, the rage of a lion is like a roar of a lion. I like it in New King James. A roaring of a lion continues to roar. Whoever provokes him the pastor to anger, sins against his own life. I mean, we are <laughs> whoever provokes us, whoever provokes him, Jesus who lives in us, okay? Do you really want to go out and make him angry? No. Okay, a person of honor will put an argument to rest. Only the stupid want to pick up a fight. We are not those who pick up a fight. We are people of honor. We put every argument, argument to rest, cease. Bury them for rest in peace. Okay. If you're too lazy to plant a seed, I like that. It's too bad when you have no harvest on which you feed. Verse 4, right? The lazy man will not plow because, oh, oh, is it winter season here? But we are not going to stay at home, pull the blanket and sleep. No, we are people. We will not be lazy, but we'll be crazy for our God. The lazy man will not plow because of winter, will not sow because of winter. He will beg during harvest and nothing. What does it mean? You cannot be lazy even in times of, you know, in, 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 okay, if you're too lazy to plant seed, it's too bad when you have no harvest on which to feed. Oh, I like the rhyme here. Okay, it's too bad when you have no harvest on which to feed. Verse 5, and I'm, I'm going to close now. A man of deep understanding will give good advice. Can you put King James Version or any other trans? A man of deep understanding will give good advice, drawing out from the well within. Many will tell you they're your loyal friends, but who can find who's truly trustworthy? Okay, please do me a favor. After you go back home, read the old passage, you know. Okay, uh, 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 is that verse 5 over there? Oh, that's right. Counsel in the heart of a man is like deep waters. Pause. Salah. Take a deep breath. <sighs> Counsel in the heart. Of every man, there is counsel in the heart of every human being. If you're doing live, those who are watching me online, on live, there's deep purpose God has put in your heart. Deep destiny God has put in your heart. There is deep, deep, deep revelation, deep wisdom God has put in your heart, whoever you are watching me. And only a prophetic person, a man of understanding will bring it out. Like Saul went to meet Samuel. He, Saul was doing donkey business. He's taking care of father's donkey. And he lost few lost his donkey and the servant says to Saul, hey, don't we have a seer here? Seer is here. Do not fear. Okay, seer is here and let's go meet the seer. His name is Samuel. Maybe he will tell us where the donkeys are lost. Why should we waste our money going around? I love people who love, who, who, who do business. You know, instead of doing business by the principles you learned in Harvard University, Yale University, you just come to Jesus Feet University and God gives you not, he doesn't throw books at you, he throws strategies, money. Deuteronomy 8, 18 says he gives power to produce wealth. He gives you ability. He gives you skill. God alone gives the skill and the power and the ability to create wealth. Wealth creation. The best place to learn about how to multiply wealth. Or bit, don't go to Bitcoin. Don't go to Hitcoin. Don't go anywhere. Come to the Jesus. He is the creator of all the wealth and honor is in his hands. He will multiply it to you while you sit at his feet. 
worshiping him, your money will multiply in the bank. Try it. It worked for many people. It worked for you. Okay. So when David, when Saul comes to the seer and king and and Samuel the prophet looks at Saul and he says, "What are you not the one the whole Israel is searching for, sir? I think you're talking to the wrong person. I'm actually I lost a few donkeys. Could you please tell me where the <laughs> where the donkeys are. And he said, no, are you not the donkey? No, he didn't say that. Are you not the donkey the old king, the old Israel is looking for? He said, are you not the one the old Israel is looking for? He still didn't understand. Sir, are you talking to me or somebody else? I know you're a prophet. You talk bizarre stuff. You don't understand what a prophet speaks sometimes. Where are you going, sir? What are you telling? Yeah, are you not the one the old Israel is looking for? Are you sure you're talking to me? Yes, I'm talking to you. He said, okay, go rest. Come back tomorrow. I'll tell you where your donkeys are. As for your donkeys, they're already found. And they are found in such and such place. He gives the description. And then he says, these servants have found the donkey. Your father is worried about you. Your father is worried about you. And your father, heavenly father is worried. Take your eyes off the donkeys. Put your eyes on the kingdom that he has for you. When Samuel the seer looks at Saul, he looks at the destiny and the purposes that are hidden in the heart of Saul. Ecclesiastes 3.11 says, Ecclesiastes 3.11 on the screen, what does it say? Okay. Ecclesiastes 3.11. Destiny is hidden in the heart of man. What does it say in your Bible, please? What does Ecclesiastes 3.11 say? Okay, he has made everything beautiful in his time and also he has put eternity. Wow, isn't it amazing? God has put eternity in your hearts. <laughs> uh, maybe the physical heart will not last an eternity, but the eternal heart lasts for eternity. He has put eternity in your heart, except that no one can find out the work that God does from the beginning to the end. No one can find out, but God is no one. He is, he is everything. God can find out what he has put in your heart. So, to cut the short story long, uh, when Samuel looks at Saul, he says, are you not going to be the king of all Israel? He said, what? Come back tomorrow and tell your servant to go behind. And he anointed him. Saul never knew that he's called to be a king. Saul had no clue. He was stuck to the blue with no clue, <laughs> like a glue. He had no clue that he's going to become a king. How many of us could be sitting here not knowing you're sitting on a jackpot, you're sitting on a throne, you're sitting on a kingdom? I was in Indonesia for some time back, some time back, some time back is long time back. And uh, I was in, I was talking to uh, a lady hijacked us on the way, and he says, Psst, Prophet, can you just pray for us? I know you are crossing, so we crossed you so that we can stop you. Can you pray for us? Our house is somewhere here. Can you pray for us? I said, yeah, on the road, we stop our car and we walk to the sides. And just, uh, we were on a mountain trek or somewhere like that. And I looked at the lady. I said, sister, you have no clue. What, what, uh, no, I pray for my job. I work for my garment. I said, sister, please, please, don't tell me about your problems. No, I want you to pray for me. God is not interested in our problem. Don't explain. Don't waste time telling God about your problem. Because he knows your problem that you had, you have, and you're going to have. <laughs> he is God Almighty. He's not a next door neighbor to tell your problems to. He doesn't have that much time to waste. <laughs> God doesn't like to waste. Okay, so... I look at her and say, don't tell me about your problem. I don't care about your problem, but I care about your solution. God doesn't want to be part of your problem. God wants to be part of your solution. Okay? One of our guys, media guys, please get a nice stand for this dear sister later on. Buy her and gift her so that she doesn't have to hold the phone. So sweet of her. God bless her. I like this sister. She's holding the phone for such a long time. She says, even if my hand pains, I will not miss that word that comes from the throne of God. Who knows? Somebody will get blessed. I will hold my phone. I use my hand as a stand. By the power of your hand, I will stand. May you stand by the power of his hand. And may you have a good stand, golden stand. Okay, pastor, make sure you get a stand. I like people who record. I know somebody's 
pulling the anointing from within me. Wow, awesome. So I looked at this lady and said, sister, I don't want to be part of your problem. I want to be part of your solution. And the solution is, see, you are sitting on, you are sitting on a throne. You are a woman of God, child of God, daughter of God. Forget about your problem. You are a child of a king and you are standing, you are, you are right on top of a gold mine. You are on top of a, a jackpot. You know, you are, God has placed you. It's spiritually speaking, he's made you sit with you in the heavenly places. You are standing in a place in God, with God, for God, by God, and live to God. I said this, I just, Lord, bless her, whatever it is in Jesus' name. I just get into the car and I get out. This lady, she's standing in a land, empty land. There's no building here. There's no land here. There's nothing around. Empty land, dry land, rocky soil. And she goes and finds her from the government, the land where she stood, and she went and bought that land. Huge loan. She took a huge loan and bought that huge piece of land. And Pastor Noble, his name, his name is Pastor Noble, he asked, why did you go and buy a land which is so deserted? And no, no. no, the prophet said you're standing on a gold mine. No, he meant spiritually. You have treasure on the inside. You are a woman of God. You have treasure. That's not what he meant. You need to interpret the prophet's prophecy, not take it Literally like that. I don't care. He told me I'm sitting on a jackpot. I'm standing on a gold mine. So I went and bought this land. It's okay, Pastor. I just want to buy the land. Pastor said, what kind of crazy people who believe crazy prophets? <laughs> Forget about it. She wants to build something over there and a house on a mountain. Mountain. You shall have a house of prayer. You shall have a house of healing. This is what I said. You shall have a house of prayer, a house of healing, house of miracles, house of bread, house. Every house I can remember, I said it. And I walked out. This lady, crazy lady, wonderful lady, she went and bought that piece of land. She sent the, sends the soil for testing before drilling. And the government comes running back and says, can you give back that land back to us? Said, no. Why? What happened? There is water underneath the soil. There's a river that's flowing underneath. And there is no water anywhere around. People are struggling for water. And there's a river below the rocks. Between two rocks, there's a w river, pure, crystal clear water. Like the fountain that you said, talked about. This lady... Went and then the word went around. The people of the other faith went and bought all the other leftover lands and they started digging, thinking there's water. Nobody found water. <laughs> but this lady, thank God, she bought such a huge piece of land, acres of land. If you want that testimony, it's in YouTube. I can send the link for those who are watching me online. I can send the link about the testimony. It's there on record. So, so, so. So she bought that land, and, uh, and uh, she remembered every word I spoke. House of healing, house of miracle, house of this. And then she, she I don't know whether she built. She's building a seven-story hotel, and she's having a water plant like Aqua, manufacturing, supplying water. It's um, people that of other faiths are investing, said, we bought so much land, and we do not know what to do. Please, we want to give it to you. You give us any price you want. So this lady bought all the other land, too. And then to cut the short story long, she's building a hotel. And most importantly, she's telling, I'm going to build a house of prayer in this deserted land to honor the God Almighty who gave this land with the water, with the money. And now the banks are offering her money so that she can build a water plant, she can have a hotel, she can turn the place. Because there's a river flowing underneath. Can you believe? Come on, somebody, clap your hands to our God Almighty. So why? Why am I saying this? Now, don't do what I'm telling you to do unless until God tells you to do that. Hear from God. But when I come to this land, it's not just for the, for the church. Of course, I come. You are amazing people. We don't come for the building because God has moved out of the building. He's, he's moved into the marketplace. Bob Jones prophesied, the glory of the Lord has left the church building. But nobody believed it. But now, when they see uh, people not able to come, because God is not interested to keep all the anointing and the healing and the miracles in four walls. Jesus didn't die on the cross. Forgive me for my expression. I love your pastor. Pastor loves me and he never takes offense at my word. And But he 
he says this man of God, whatever he speaks, you know, God vouches him. God stands. So I say God is not interested. Jesus didn't die on the cross, shed his precious blood for us to have a nice service, nice building and have a pity party. You know, first service, second service, third service, fourth service, fifth service, sixth service, seventh service, car service, laundry service. God is not interested in servicing us, recycling us. He, this church is a place of healing, a place of training. I believe the days are coming in 1905, Spokane, Washington, D, Washington, D.C., Spokane, Washington State. If you Google this, uh, uh, the Guinness Book of Records is recorded. Uh, the Spokane, the healthiest city in the old world because of one businessman, one businessman, not a pastor, not an evangelist, one businessman selling sales, insurance guy selling uh, insurance. He lived in that city and he believed in God Almighty. And because he lived in that city, the old city was healed and there was not a single sick person in the old city. 1905, Spokane, Guinness Book of Records, records, healthiest city in the all world. Hospitals were empty. Nurses jobless. Doctors became pastors. Nurses became worship leaders. And hospitals became churches. Instead of churches becoming hospitals these days, hospitals became churches. Why? Because God is interested. He said, I will build my church. He never told us, go build a church. He said, I will build my church and the gates of hell cannot resist it, cannot stop it. Gates of hell cannot stop the church. What church is talking about? Not the cathedrals, not the buildings, but he's talking, our body is a temple of God. You are the house of God. You are the church of God. You are the church of God. Jesus lives in you. He wants living praise. He wants us. So why do we have buildings? It is a training center, healing center. Train people, equip people, send them, send them to the nation, send them to the marketplace. If the church does not go into the world, the world will come into the church. Acts 1 8, go to the ends of the earth and preach the gospel. Amen. Let's close our eyes. Father, what you prophesied, what you showed about, showed about New Hampshire, the wells of revival. You said, reopen, redig the wells of revival. And Pastor tells me yesterday, there's a place called Wells here. Do you have any idea? I said, no idea. I didn't do my homework. I didn't do my groundwork. I didn't check the background, friend ground. I just come to take ground. <laughs> we don't come to check the background, we come to take the ground back. For Jesus, because this is the place of revival. This is a wellspring of revival. As a man of God standing in the office of the prophet, and then, uh, that you placed me, that you honored me, I declare and decree wells of revival will spring forth. Even as that lady, lady realized that land, that dry land she was standing, there was a well within. As uh, uh, Genesis 26, chapter verse 1 to 13 says, Isaac dug a well. They came and fought against him. Philistines came and fought against him. It became Isaac, it became Sitna, and then God, he dug again, and it became Rehoboth, the God has enlarged his place. Thus says the Lord, dear pastor, that um, I'm going to give you this land uh, by the power of my hand. You just don't need to just stand, but now take it by your hand. The kingdom of God is at hand. Yes, this is going to be a place of revival. This is going to be a place of healing. This is going to be a place where healing angels, I already see them, healing angels standing right over here and say, come on, preach it. Thank you, angels. Can you stop the clock, angels? Because there's a healing that's flowing. There's going to be well of revival that's going to sprout forth in this place. Spring forth. Spring out a well. Isaiah 12 3. Spring out a well within my soul. Yes, let the healing begin, Lord. In this house, in this place, I declare and decree as a man of God, let the people of God come to receive healing, miracles, signs and wonders, not in the building, but in the marketplace. From here, they will be trained, equipped, and the revival that you prophesied that shall start from the north and flow down to the south, this revival I will start from here, oh God. Even not only go to Canada, but, but go down uh, not only to England, but not only go to the other parts of the world, Alaska, but it will go down, even down to Florida, even down to Florida. The river will flow from north to south, from the mountain top. This is a place of revival. This is a place of, not a place of survival. It is not a place of the, uh, it is a place to finish every arrival before God's arrival, before God's second coming, before God's arrival, we're going to finish 
finish every rival because this is a place of revival, not a place of survival. And I call for the sons and the daughters to come forth, manifest sons and daughters to come into the kingdom of God for such a time as this in the marketplace, in the, in the marketplace, in the government, in the seven mountains of culture. Let our sons and daughters arise. Let the Jehu generation arise and let them come forth. Let's have a school of prophets in this place, school of miracles, healing technicians. Let the dream of Jonathan Edwards, the man who dug the well in Massachusetts, here in Maine, let those healing revivals. And I see above here, there's a huge lake above this place. Huge lake, water above this place. And as we dig in with praise, as we lift our fingers, like the way sister was leading her worship, raise our hands. Every song is so prophetic that you sang. God gave you those songs for you to sing. And everything I preach, you did not know what I'm going to preach. Even I did not know what I'm going to preach. But God, you almighty, God, Almighty knew all this. As we lift our hands, we touch the heavens, touch the sky, and bring down that wells of revival that's stored up. There's wells, the lakes, reservoir, reservoir, reservoir of river that's been stored up by the saints of God, by intercession, by prayer, by word. They've stored up so much for us. Stored up so much for us. And as we worship God, as we worship God, we're going to bring this down. Father, thank you for giving me this opportunity to release the word in the atmosphere. You know, when you send a man of God, it's not just for a church, not for people. It's for the city, oh God. It's to shift the atmosphere. A prophet is not a prophet is not a prophet of doom and gloom, and, but a prophet will make you bloom and zoom from this room. Yes, to meet the bridegroom. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for the, giving me an opportunity to release the word in this place. Jesus' mighty name and everybody say... Amen. Come on, can you give a big clap to Jesus? Thank you, Lord. So God, drink from the healing water. Hallelujah. 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 For God, we thank you, Lord, that you unlocked Unlock with the key in your hand, Father God, I pray. And I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Father God. The door of revival that has been shut for so long, Father God, now it's open. Now it's open. Now it's open. Upon New England, Father God, we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Upon men from born in New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Father God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you for the fresh water from heaven in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you, Lord, for a charge of God, oh Lord, strong anointing. Father God, we thank you, Lord. We receive it, we get it, we receive it. Hallelujah. 
will operate in our daily life under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for a man of God that you sent, oh God, all the way from Bangalore, India. Thank you for Dr. Joshua Paul. Thank you for his heart, his desire just to please you, Lord. Just to obey you and deliver the word of the Lord. Father God, we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Bless his family, his ministry, oh God. Bless his journey while, while he is here in, this, in the States, Father God. That through his ministry, oh God, every single person will be touched by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Lord, we thank you, Lord. We pray, oh God, for the 11 o'clock service, oh God. Father God, be with us and speak to us. Speak to us, oh God, through this man of God. Speak to us, Father God. As we go separate ways after this service as well. Father God, let the blessings of the Lord, the anointing of God be upon us and be with us, Father God. Lift up your hands. And you also at home who receive the anointing of the Holy Spirit, lift your hands and receive the blessings of the Lord. Let the abundant blessing of our, of our Father in heaven, the loving kindness of Jesus Christ, our dear Savior, the sweet fellowship with the Holy Spirit will guide us, protect us, anoint us, and bless us in abundance from now, tomorrow, and forever. And all of you who receive the blessings of the Lord, say with me, Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. I'll see you next week. Hallelujah. So I have a little announcement. If you...